The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. I was speaking with a woman last week and she was describing someone that she had just met and said he was a holy man. So I asked her how she knew. Not that I was challenging the man's holiness, but I wanted to explore what it is about a person that we can see such a deep attribute even in a new acquaintance. And she thought for a moment and she said, there was a richness, a depth in him He seemed so peaceful. He was gentle, caring, and oh, so humble. That sounds like a far cry from what we heard in the readings about some men that we would expect to be holy. Both Jesus and Malachi present scathing indictments about men that have turned aside from the way and are more concerned with titles and trappings than they are with holiness and righteousness. So I was wondering if you had ever thought about the holy people that have intersected your lives and made an impression upon you. I suspect that all of us have at least one person that would come to mind. For me, the first person I thought of was Father Alexis Paul. I met him um, when he was on the staff at the Holy Family Retreat Center. And he was both simultaneously unassuming and impressive. He was a gifted liturgist and a preacher. And man, what an awesome tenor voice. Though he was constantly being praised and built up for his talents, his nature was that of a humble servant. I never sensed ego or pride. Rather, what I felt in his presence was peace. Then I started considering my own presence and wondered what people would see in me. Now many of you know that I spent most of my life doing IT work for large financial companies. And my ambition was to be so proficient and successful in my field that I'd be well known and sought after by potential employers. And I progressed rapidly growing in skill and in responsibility, and I was earning increasingly greater titles. And I was an assistant vice president. I was talented, successful, and important. And just when I thought my dream was in reach, I got laid off. And I thought, how could someone with my skill and accomplishments just be simply kicked to the curb? 
And as weeks of networking and cold calls and resumes turned into months, I began to doubt everything. I wondered if I really had any value at all. Now maybe it's a male thing, but I think for many of us, our identity and self-worth are tied to what we do, especially if we're successful. And I imagine if I asked you to introduce yourselves, one of the first things you say is, I am an electrician or whatever, right? And now I'm wondering, how am I going to introduce myself? I was lost and devastated. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But now in hindsight, being humbled was a gift It was necessary, and I'm grateful. And while I was out of work, I got a call from Father Alexis. He was looking for some volunteers. He wanted to automate the contact system at the uh, retreat center. He wanted a database, and that I could do. So the work gave me something tangible and valuable to do, and was a pleasant distraction from the job search. But more important, As I was helping Father Alexis, he was helping me. It started with him simply offering to pray for me. And I said, great, with such a holy man praying for me, I should have a job in no time. But then the more time that we spent together, he helped me to see myself as something more than an out-of-work reject. I was a beloved child of God. Yeah, I know. We all learned that in third grade, right? But I never really understood the reality of that special parent-child relationship. And it's hard as grown men and women to imagine ourselves as little children, as God's children. But that's the truth that Jesus told us. He said, unless you become like a child. Now this took me a while to grasp because my pride and my ego had blinded me. From my experience, if we perform works to be exalted, if we crave places of honor, if we are fond of being hailed in the marketplace. Now, while none of these are necessarily bad or evil things on their own, they can lead to a hardening of the heart and the soul as pride and ego take over. And the thing about pride and ego is that we begin to think that we can take care of anything by ourselves. And maybe we don't consciously say, God, I don't need you. But we forget to involve God, to rely on God, and to trust in God. And we begin to drift away. And I had drifted. But Father Alexis helped me understand my true identity, our true identity as children of God created in God's own image. Success, happiness, and peace are not about titles and trappings. They're not about what we believe we can do, but who we believe we are. Eventually, my relationship with God began to change, and so did my prayer. I stopped asking God to give me a new job. Rather, I asked God to help me find the depth, to feel the depth and the truth of his love, to help me relax from the anxiety of the job search, and to uh, trust in God's presence and concern for my happiness. I prayed for a peaceful heart. And that's what God gave me. As in the psalm, I longed for my soul to be comforted like a weaned child in its mother's lap, to find my peace in God. When a weaned child crawls into his mother's lap, he's no longer bobbing his head around looking for that one thing that mother can give. A weaned child simply wants to be with mom, to bask in the warmth of her love. So we too are to become like children eager to climb into God's lap. Our purpose simply to be with the one who loves us beyond our wildest dreams. It's not to be close enough to God to whisper into his ear, where's my job? 
A weaned child knows that mom will take care of me because mom loves. And God will take care of us because God loves us abundantly and unconditionally. So settle into the lap of that love so you too can say with your whole heart, in you, Lord, I have found my peace. Today, Jesus is reminding us of what is truly important, and it's not titles and trappings. It's not about being a master. What is important is the humility that comes when we recognize that all we have, that all we are, comes from God because God loves her children. And when we settle into that love, it rubs off. We grow in gratitude and holiness. We grow in humility, and our hearts are more at peace. Because of my experience, I am grateful for a holy man that knew how to enjoy the lap of God. I am grateful for his companionship during my conversion. And I am grateful for learning how to claim my place as a child of God, to be more confident in saying, in you, Lord, I have found my peace. Now, I suspect that many of you have had or perhaps are on a similar journey. And I pray that God will continue to help us all to grow in a greater appreciation for our sacred childhood. And in that intimacy with God, may we grow in holiness and humility so that we may be able to help others settle into God's love and confidently say, in you, Lord, I have found my peace.